People are running everywhere, and for the first time in a long time, the Justice League are losing control of a battle. Green Lantern is already down, and Hawkgirl is getting hammered as well. The big giant robot monstrosity stands tall, and in comes Superman and Martian Manhunter. They make it step back, but the giant is extremely strong. It is revealed that Lex Luthor is controlling the robot from a secret location in the middle of the sea. Hawkgirl tries to go on the offense again, and finally, the robot is destroyed when Superman tears it open, and Batman destroys its reactor with an exploding batarang. Following the explosion, the Flash creates a whirlwind so as to prevent the robot from falling over his teammates. However, he reaches such a high speed that he inadvertently transports Jon Stewart, John, Hawkgirl, and himself to somewhere else with the Speed Force. Only Batman and Superman are left at the ruins, and Lex Luthor is thrown into the sea after his failed mission with the robot. Flash and Lantern wakes up followed by the Martian and Hawkgirl after a while by the side of the broken-down robot, but everything around seems different. John tries to make contact with Batman and Superman telepathically, but is overwhelmed when he sees images of a nuclear explosion destroying a city. They fan out to search for their friends. John Stewart and The Flash come across a weird old-looking neighborhood and realize it's an alternate Earth that resembles an idyllic 1950s town, the Seaboard City. Just then, they witness the music master trying to steal a violin from a music center. The master attacks the cops with his musical powers and tries to get away. Green Lantern obstructs him at first, only to be thrown away onto the building with his powers. But soon, John returns and gets hold of the stolen violin and the music master getaway. The League members are mistaken for villains by the Justice Guild of America, the resident superhero team. Flash gets thrown away first, mistaken as the thief who stole the violin. Lantern attack to defend from the newcomer by taking off his power belt. But just then, Green Lantern is blasted away by the incoming set of fighters. The Green Guardsman, Black Siren, The Streak, Tom Turbine, and Catman fight the Leaguers, and the Justice League members just cannot find a break as they are thrown everywhere. The Flash sees a building about to collapse on a young kid and he swoops in to save Ray Thompson, the young kid from being crushed. The Streak notices this act and puts himself in between Tom Turbine and Hawkgirl to stop the two teams going at each other and call on a truce. The Justice Guild goes back to its headquarters and invites the Leaguers to come along. The leader streak introduces the team and suddenly, the Martian is not feeling well. They advise him to rest and Black Siren takes Hawkgirl to the kitchen. Maybe just this once we can all play along. So, you fight crime and bake cookies. Leaves the men to talk. Now, that's more like the good old days, right? Green Lantern explains to Flash that all of these people are from his favorite comic books when he was a child and they actually inspired him. Hawkgirl brings out milk and cookies and Flash makes fun of her, maybe for the very last time. Elsewhere on a seaside mountain cave, Music Master talks to his own team, the Injustice Guild, about the new heroes that have arrived. They decide to start a crime wave, each doing his own crime to see who could do the best crime. Tom Turbine explains to the Leaguers the theory of infinite number of alternate universes, each having its own vibrational pattern. He believes that Flash's speed is what caused them to come to their Earth. John theorizes that the creators of the comics must have had a subconscious link to this Earth as well. Tom Turbine unveils his interdimensional portal he designed, but lacks a proper energy source to help them return home. So they will have to wait some more time to get back. Streak order Black Siren to get some desert from the kitchen, and Hawk Girl is pissed off at the treatment. Yikes! The doorbell rings, and the sergeant has come to deliver a letter for them. The guild gets a letter telling them of the crime spree which is based on the four elements. Fire, air, water, and earth. The guild makes the four league members honorary members of their team, and the two teams pair up to stop the Injustice Guild. Flash gets Black Siren for obvious reasons. The Streak and Green Lantern go to stop Sir Swami from stealing the Flame of Rasputin ruby necklace but he manages to escape with ease as he blasts the two heroes away. Then gets into a telephone booth and uses his magic skills to escape without a trace. Music Master is pursued by Green Guardsman and Hawkgirl while trying to steal an antique airplane. Guardsman stops Hawkgirl from attacking the plane since it's a heritage of the city. 
Dr. Blizzard is confronted by Flash and Black Siren, while he attacks a new fountain made in honor of the safety of the city, as soon as it is declared open by the mayor. Catman and John go after Sportsman while he steals a trophy for a tennis match. Catman jumps onto the truck, but Sportsman throws a blasting shuttle at them, making Catman lose his balance. While chasing after Music Master, they try to attack him from different directions. Music Master breaks a scaffolding unit and puts the workers in danger, and the two have to go and save them. Hawk Girl then takes off to catch the Master, but she is knocked out by his accordion and lands in the city graveyard. Flash has little trouble with Dr. Blizzard as he is able to get hold of the ice ray easily, but a TNT truck almost strikes a bus full of nuns and he has to run down and save them. Flash ends up crashing the truck into a building. Dr. Blizzard takes his ice ray putting Flash and Black Siren in a block of ice. John and Catman almost catch Sportsman, but John once again sees the images of a city being destroyed in a nuclear explosion and is knocked out cold. Catman goes back to help him and Sportsman gets away. In the city graveyard, Hawk Girl wakes up and discovers to her surprise and horror the graves of the Justice Guild. They have been dead for a long time, it seems. Hawk Girl tells her teammates of the graves, but Green Lantern refuses to believe the truth. He flies off and is followed by Hawk Girl. Elsewhere, the Injustice Guild members show off their gains from their crimes, and at the very end, Dr. Blizzard comes up with his winning item, the Captured Heroes of the Justice League. Others applaud him and agree to follow his plan. The Injustice Guild decides to rob the Seaboard City Mint and escape by blimp. This provokes the Justice Guild into acting against them as soon as they receive the news of the robbers. Back in the graveyard, Green Lantern stares at the graves of his heroes and accepts the truth. He flies off and interrogates the ice cream truck driver. Green Lantern finds it strange that the man never stops to sell any ice cream. But the man refuses to say much more in fear of someone hearing their conversation. The Justice Guild finds the Injustice Guild's blimp and goes to fight them. At first it seems that the Injustice Guild will defeat their enemies as they manage to deflect all assaults. However, Catman manages to drive his motorcycle up a building and makes his own attack on the Injustice Guild. In spite of working alone, he manages to fight off the villains while Flash uses the wings on his mask to pop the blimp. Finally, they manage to capture the Injustice Guild and seize the stolen items. Ray Thompson is overjoyed watching his heroes fight against the bad guys. The same two police officers arrest the Injustice Guild and Flash finds it weird. Meanwhile, Green Lantern and Hawk Girl go to the library and find it deserted. They also discover that the books are all blank. When they try to search the archives, they find it walled off. They force their way in and find a destroyed subway station. John suspected an earthquake, but Hawk Girl saw bullet holes, meaning there was a battle there. A newspaper reveals that peace talks had failed and war was near. The newspaper is dated 40 years in the past, the same time as the last Justice Guild comic. Upon returning to their headquarters, the Guild finds Hawk Girl and Green Lantern waiting for them. Green Lantern shows them a newspaper that reveals that the Guild died. At this time, a robot attacks the town, and the police constables ring them up with the news. Green Lantern prevents the Guild from leaving, however, and reveals that the whole thing, including the Justice Guild America themselves, is an illusion. The Guild asks who's creating the illusion, and John says that he knows. He goes to Ray and uses his powers on him and reveals his true form, that of a hideous mutant. The Justice Guild takes off to fight the monster robot attacking the town, but the League stays behind to fight the real criminal mastermind, Ray Thompson. The Leaguers battle Ray, but are outmatched by his powers. The Guild sees what's going on, but hesitates. Realizing that defeating Ray will end their existence, then they decide it doesn't matter and join the League. We died once to save this Earth, and we can do it again. Together, they manage to strain Ray to his limits, knocking him out. Without his concentration, the city disappears, and so does the Guild, and the ruins of a destroyed civilization appear soon after. John explains that in this universe years ago, Seaboard City was destroyed during a missile crisis. Ray Thompson, after being exposed to the fallout, developed powerful psionic powers. Ray decided to create a new city based on his childhood, complete with his favorite heroes. In reality, they died during the catastrophe, thus the end of the Justice Guild brought the end of the comic.
The survivors emerge, happy to be free having been stuck in the fantasy world for 40 years, vowing to rebuild their city. The leaguers think of a way to get back to their own world, using Tom Turbine's interdimensional portal, powered by Green Lantern's ring, to return home. Back in their own world, Lantern mourns the deaths of his heroes. He says it doesn't make sense when they weren't real to begin with. Hawkgirl says they still sacrifice themselves to help the League which is reason enough to mourn them. At the Metropolis City Center, a race to determine who is the fastest man alive is being held. It's revealed that the race is between Superman and the Flash. Lowe's Lane is eager to witness Superman's skills, and so is Jimmy. The Central City hero Flash shows up and showboats for the crowd, hitting on Lois and literally running circles around the Man of Steel. After the competitors have a few words, the mayor announces that the two will race around the world 100 times, and whoever wins will be declared the fastest man alive. The pair is given special tracking armbands so that their progress can be watched. After receiving their instructions, Superman and the Flash take off on their run, cheered by the hundreds of people. The race continues for a considerable amount of time, and the Flash holds a slight lead over Superman. As the two continue to run, a man drives up a remote road and happily comments that they are fools and they should keep it up. He comes to a cabin that is strangely surrounded by snow while the rest of the area is warm and dry. He gets angry at the sight and quickly enters the cabin. Inside, he sees a smaller man who is holding a strange rod in his hands. This man, Ben, explains to the other man, Mark, that his machine works thanks to Superman and Flash generating high-velocity ionic energy. Mark angrily takes the rod and identifies himself as Ben's older brother. Elsewhere, Nimbus tracking station controlled by the military gets a call from Mark, who now calls himself the Weather Wizard. He tells them that he's about to demonstrate his power and creates a storm off the coast of Australia. This storm catches an oil tanker in its midst and causes it to crash, thereby rupturing its hull and releasing an oil spill. Fortunately, Superman and the Flash are nearby. The two heroes put their race on hold and goes to help the sailors. Superman saves a drowning sailor and repairs the hull using his super strength and laser beams. Flash then uses his speed to clean up the oil. After saving the ship, Superman and Flash go to Nimbus Tracking Station and hear of the Weather Wizard's demand of one billion dollars. Flash identifies the man as Mark Martin and recalls a previous scheme of his. Superman mentions that there was some money involved that was never recovered. Flash and Superman leave to confront their new enemy. The Weather Wizard notices the duo coming for him and decides to end their threat. Ben, his brother, tries to stop him on the basis that he's uncomfortable with the concept of using the machine to kill people, but the Weather Wizard is unsympathetic. He raises the rod, and Superman and the Flash find themselves caught up in a blizzard of catastrophic proportions. Both heroes are frozen in a solid block of ice. The Weather Wizard believes he has killed his enemies, but Superman manages to use his heat vision to escape, and the Flash vibrates through the ice. After their ordeal, Superman realizes that the armbands are more than just tracking bands and destroys them. Back at the Nimbus station, the pair find that the Weather Wizard is threatening to destroy Metropolis if his demands aren't met. Ben confronts the Weather Wizard over his cruelty, but finds his brother still won't listen to reason. Upset over the way things have turned out, Ben leaves but soon finds that his brother doesn't want any loose ends as Hailstorm falls onto his car and grows to dangerously large proportions. Fortunately, Flash and Superman are able to come to his aid and saves him in the very last minute. Ben tells his rescuers about his brother's plans and the two go to confront him. However, the Weather Wizard has already started a storm on Metropolis and when the Flash attempts to run into the house, he finds it's protected by lightning. Superman manages to get in by tunneling into the house. However, when Superman confronts the Weather Wizard, he finds that the Weather Rod is a powerful weapon all of its own. Fortunately, the Flash joins Superman and forces the Weather Wizard to drop the rod. This causes Gale Force winds to kick up in the house and Superman has to save both men. When they get out, the machine is destroyed. The two take the Weather Wizard back to jail and realize how well they work together. They then decide to continue their race to determine who is the fastest man alive. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. 
have a nice day.